square waves where the peak of the wave lasts for three seconds. The waves go up and down, up and down. Do you see little waves on the surface? Well, why would they communicate back to you, David? Well, this it gets more amazing, George, because this is only the beginning of the communication back. But within the same day, there was a video posted that at USC, somebody had gotten a radio transmission, radio waves coming from Comet Eleni. I, I saw that. I don't know how real that is. I don't know how real it is either, but, but what I do know, George, is I sent out my mission, my transmission on August 21st in the wee hours, and August 22nd, I'm getting a magnetic signal back on my property. Anywhere I go in a full acre, anywhere I go in Sedona, I'm getting the signal. And I'm, I'm saying, does anybody else out there, you know, about one of these meters, can you tell me if the signal is always coming back to me where we sent the transmission, and, and why... Why threes and sixes over and over again, and why does it end just before the Colorado quake? Well, the next day, these clouds are all over Sedona, and a mile-wide perfect triangle is cut out of the cloud. And then a, a circular, you know, form is cut out of the cloud. And I thought, okay, no one I, – I understand how a UFOs can vibrate in ultra-high frequency dimensions, for example, in the ultraviolet spectrum where the human eye doesn't see. Right. This goes back into my NASA UFO work. And ultraviolet light is so hot that even though you can't see it, it can leave a thermal imprint – on the moisture droplets in the air and therefore move clouds and give you these interesting shapes. Well, if that wasn't satisfying enough to me, it got more amazing because one of the questions I asked them was, can you beam yourself physically into my house? Physically. You, you, you asked them to beam themselves into your house. Physically beam themselves in my house. Now, Ellen in each day is getting closer. All of the coincidences around Ellen and the earth-changing events are, are undeniable. The When you understand how a, a body of iron and ice moving through a plasma energy field in the solar system, how powerful that is electrically. I'm asking myself, okay, I'm not really buying all this Ellen stuff. Is Ellen in a spaceship? Is Ellen going to cause giant tsunamis on September 27th? Well, to go back to the Chile earthquake two Februarys ago when I was speaking at the UFO well, Congress. Today's the 27th, isn't it? Today is the 27th. Yeah. Ellen is lined up today across the eclipse. This is the big day. When Ellen crossed the outer, outside of the sun in the Earth's orbit on February uh, 20, it was the 23rd or the 24th, in that window, I forget when it was, all of a sudden you had this massive, you know, near 9.0 earthquake in Chile. And I predicted the earthquake three days before it happened because I saw a massive, massive eruption on the sun. And I'm always watching the sun, and I count three days later because that's how long it takes the plasma wave to hit. Yeah, that's right. Right. And Mitch Brickrow can, can talk to you about that stuff, too. So you can see that whenever you get a plasma ejection on the sun, you can get an earthquake right away, and then you can get a really big one or some other earth-changing events like you know tornadoes and, and, and uh, hurricanes when the plasma wave actually hits us. Well, that happens every time when Ellen was crossing the ecliptic, every single time, including the, the Christchurch earthquake in New Zealand and Japan. In fact, everyone was saying March 15th is going to be this huge earthquake because, because Ellen is going to cross the ecliptic on the outer part of the solar system, and March 11th, which is early, you get this massive 9 point earthquake, and you say, well, I, I saw, and everybody knows on Facebook I did this, a huge eruption on the sun three days before the 9.0 in Japan. I posted it. Within minutes, there was a 7.2 or 3 in Japan, and three days later, the magic... Well, now, when you say you posted it, you posted the flare, or you posted the idea of a upcoming earthquake? I posted that there was a massive, not a normal medium-sized CME, a massive eruption on the sun, and it was actually on the backside. But when you have eruptions on the backside, you can get a shock wave that ripples across the front towards us. So what happened was three days later we had the Japan earthquake, but there was Ellen in once again, crossing the ecliptic on the outer part of the solar system. And so how good a small body like that if it's a comet when it's dragging its mass through a plasma field, produce an electric field that is strong enough to trigger the sun? And so this was a new theory that it w the sun was indeed causing the event subsequently, but was Ellen in triggering it? Well, what we know that just several days ago, before the 27th, Actually, it was the 25th or the 26th when this giant coronal mass ejected hit our planet. And it wasn't supposed to hit us. This was a massive magnetic spot. Well, and more are coming, David.